first one is from yeah. the suffering of suffering. Well, 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 that's a different set of forms. I was going to say that, you know, suffering of suffering. <laughs> In other words, what we think of normally as suffering is suffering. Then, but pleasure or non-suffering is called suffering of change because it changes into suffering. It doesn't last. It's impermanent. So that's what we call pleasure. And then there's the suffering of creation, I call it, or of composition, meaning that which is meant for people who can attain some kind of a type of blissful meditative state where they, like in what's called the formless realm or the immaterial realm, where they're feeling no pain in a way, they're like almost like an anesthetic, anesthesia type of state. But because it's a caused relational state, it will come to an end. And therefore, a deeper knowledge of it knows that even that is suffering. So anything that's made of parts and causal processes, the seeds of its own destruction are going with it. It's a relative state. So that's called the suffering of creation. So that's the primal three. Then there's a, prime, there's a set of four, I think, elements, which is suffering of birth, suffering of aging, suffering of sickness, suffering of death, I think. Mm -hmm. So those are four kinds of suffering. Then there's a lot of more suffering, like meeting people you don't like, losing people you do like, and there's a bunch of stuff like that. I can't remember all of them. They're really awful. Yeah, uh, <coughs> I think the four suffering, it goes uh, perfectly with uh, uh -huh. medicine. Okay. Because they are a spiritual, like Buddhist subject, and also a very much medical subject. Yes. Because about birth, so it's a very important medical subject. Yeah. So about aging, it's a suffering. Then we do anti-aging. Yeah. So that's like Julian rejuvenation. Yeah. And the solution for sickness is the the medicine or treatments. Yeah. So we talked about five treatments. And then, so medical goal is... Uh, cure for death, cure for death. Anti-death. No, we cure we try, death with we rebirth. Try, we try to prolong <laughs> the death, prolong the life. We cure death with a good rebirth in Ando. <laughs> 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 That's what we do. That's how we cure death. And, uh, I think this is the main point, why the spiritual and medicine comes together. Yes, well, let me say, okay, can I go back a little bit on yes. the connection with your science? <laughs> I'm sorry. But you know, when Buddha first taught, he, he taught the five companions who had been his, with him when he was being super ascetical, super self-mortifying, mm -hmm. and he taught them something called Four Noble Truths. And that's where that word noble comes from that you see around. And, um, and those truths were a medical, they themselves are a medical diagnosis. So he, he, he sees life as, as something requiring therapy and healing. It's interesting. In other words, it's the truth of, noble truth of suffering is that's the symptom. The cause of suffering is self-centeredness and delusion and ignorance fundamentally and then greed and hatred coming out of that. And, uh, and that is like the etiology, you know, the analysis of the causation of the symptom. Right? Then cessation or nirvana is the prognosis. Like the, you know, the cure is you can attain nirvana, you're going to be really happy. But, you know, you can be. And then the, the therapy is the eightfold path which includes, which is educational actually, education in ethics, education in mind or meditation, and edu education in uh, wisdom or science or understanding the nature of reality. So it's a total medical thing and that's why actually in Indian history, although the Brahmins today, because they forgot what Buddhism contributed to India, they accept that he was God, but then they don't know what he did as God, you know, they were just waiting for Kalki later, <laughs> after, after Krishna, you know. And what more was Buddha going to do? Uh, when nobody knows, unless they have a story. But, uh, but still, the medicine was spread in India based on the Buddhist monastics, because once they became monastic, they would no longer belong to a particular caste. So even many of them were Brahmins or Kshatriya or Vaishya earlier, but they, they could treat untouchable, which was the majority of the population, they could treat the low caste or outcast person, the tribal, anybody because they all humans were the same to them. That was one of Buddha's innovations. And um, so, so the, the contribution of the Buddhist medicine, you know, which you talk, re-refined and collected and added more things from, other, from Greece and from, from China and from everywhere, and from Mongolia and from Tibet. But uh, the ancient Indian one was also empirical. It was helping people and it was um, serving people. And of course, Buddhism is a service industry. It's not like an ownership industry. It's 
it's a uh, capitalism. It's a service industry, right? Someone like Elon has a vow, and he, he can get in trouble in countries where when medicine is not legal, which is one of our jobs here at Menlo, to try to eventually figure out a way of getting bed medicine fully accepted in America, because he has a vow. He has to he has to help somebody who's sick if he knows what he can't not say to them, right? By vow. And the only Tibetan doctors who visit here, they they're ready to treat the policemen. They don't care. <laughs> so because if they're sick, you know, they have to do it. So it's a great thing. Yeah, okay. I'm glad to hear Paul. What? I tried to cure Paul in Rome. Oh, the Pope? Yeah. You did? Which one? The, this Pope? Oh, all of them. Oh, all of them. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, this one needs to be kept nice and healthy because yeah. there, are other, <laughs> no, there are other people in the Vatican this who one, don't like him. This, one needs, this one needs a children, rejuvenation. He does. Because he does. Because, but also he has too many enemies in the Vatican who don't mm -hmm. like his reform thing. They, they don't like that. Uh, this thing about LGBT and this and that, they don't make it at all. There's one guy who's the foreign secretary there, he eats on golden plates. Oh. It's golden goblets and drink wine. Oh. He doesn't like Francis checking into his kitchen, his <laughs> diet. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Look, it's enough for me. Okay. Mute. Should we make a tea break? Yes. Ten minutes of tea break. Okay.